Hello, nice to see you again. <laughs> Today I'd like to share with you of some angelic visitations that I have experienced. And I'm doing this because I believe that at this moment in time, God is releasing many, many more angels to this earth and to his people. There's many different reasons why God sends angels. So if you've never had any experience of angelic visitations, I hope today that I can reassure you that there is absolutely nothing to fear. When God sends angels, it's always for your benefit. And although you may be a little surprised at the time, just know this, that God sends his angels to help you and protect you in different situations. Angels are sent from heaven to assist us, to partner with us, to instruct us and to be servants to us. May the experiences I'm about to share with you bring revelation of just how much God loves you and cares for you in every single position of your life, every single circumstance of your life. Now this is not an in-depth study. It's just I'm sharing from personal experience and to know that it's all biblically based. For 30 years I've experienced angelic vis visitations and I'd just like to share with you some of these things. Angels are sent to serve us because of how much God loves us. Therefore, number one ministry of angels is to reveal the love of God to you. When an angel brings the presence of the glory of the Lord to you, you know that the person of Jesus Christ really loves you. In scripture in Hebrews 1 and 14, talking of the angels, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who inherit salvation? Angels are sent to serve us. Those who know the Lord God, he sends his servants to us in any given situation. One of the most um, evident situations that I had when I had a visitation was of in my conservatory when I lived in Norimpo. The Lord, the Holy Spirit actually prompted me to take all my writings through to read them in the conservatory was where I liked to study. So I took them all and read some of my notes from, oh, 20 years ago, different notepads and different writings. And after I got a little uh, tired at the concentration, I just swung my legs up onto this little settee, laid back and closed my eyes and I was praying. Suddenly, out of the blue, Three yards away from me in my conservatory stood an open vision of Jesus. Now, I was really shocked at this, surprised, and pinned to the settee. <laughs> and Jesus was standing there with like an everyday white robe, like what you would imagine in Bible times. And his hair was about my length and it was 
um, brown, dark brown, not black as I would have imagined. And next to him was standing this angel who was much taller. I could see the huge wings. And this angel had just down to below his ear, curly white hair. And he was wearing a brilliant white robe, like the way you would imagine angels to be. So I was there pinned to the settee when suddenly Jesus took his hand like this across the front of his body and he was introducing me to his angel. Now he had at the left side of him, the left leg, a treasure chest. And I knew instantly that what was in that treasure chest was spare body parts. And this was for people that were to receive new parts of their body, whether it be ears, um, hands, different areas of the body but I knew that this was a treasure chest for creative miracles and it stood between Jesus and the angel. So when Jesus introduced me to the angel I heard in my spirit the scripture from Exodus 23 verse 20 and it says behold I am going to send my angel before you to guard you along the way and to bring you into the place I have prepared. Well, this was all just two weeks before the Root Youth Academy was due to be launched in Presswick. And incidentally, when I was gathering up all my writings, a little jotter fell out on top of this ottoman and it fell open to this page and it said there exactly what I believe that Jesus was saying to me behold I'm going to send my angel before you to guard you along the way and to bring you into the place that I have prepared so God always confirms what he brings to you I was in awe of Jesus that he would do this thing for me. And I knew that at that moment, that healing, healing was to be a main focus, an important focus of the New Root Youth Academy in Presswick. So we obeyed, the volunteer staff, we obeyed, and we saw many young people come into the kingdom of God. We saw them healed, delivered and set free from these soul-destroying issues of life, drugs, alcohol. One miracle was this young guy, Liam. His name was Liam. And Liam had, had been playing rugby at the school about nine months before. And he had broken his collarbone. You could actually see through his t-shirt that the bone was split in two and one part was like an inch above the other part. So he was to have now, after nine months, he was to have an operation and a steel pin put in, which he was dreading. So we said, Liam, has anyone ever prayed for you? Oh, I said, no, would you like us to pray for you? So we did pray and we commanded those bones to come into alignment in Jesus' name. And we commanded these bones to knit together, properly knit together in the name of Jesus. We didn't see him for two or three weeks and he came back and he had been to the hospital, had the x-ray, and what they did say concerning the x-ray, concerning his broken shoulder blade, they said it was totally 
healed, perfectly in position and perfectly healed. Oh, God is so good. So I said, Liam, do you think that was a miracle? He said, yes, it was a miracle because they did not do any surgery and he had suffered that pain for all these months. So that was just one of the things that happened uh, at the Ru Ru Youth Academy through obeying the Lord and making healing an important focus. Now, after a few months of this um, organisation, this um, um, <laughs> youth work uh, being very successful, there was maybe about 45, 50 kids came regularly, teenagers every week. And then one week, suddenly the numbers dropped away down to 10. And we're saying, what could have caused that? What is the problem here? And God showed us that witchcraft had come against the work. Because although we were a youth academy, we had a separate teaching if any of the young people were interested that they would come on a Monday night and be introduced to the things of God and the Bible. So it was Christian based, although the cafe did not um, portray these things, but these young people did want to come and they came on a Monday night and they learned more about healing, they learned about Holy Spirit, they learned how God loves them so much and it really, they were so helped. So witchcraft did not want these young people to come to know Jesus and they, they were cursing the work, of course. So anyway, once we knew this, we thought, right, now we know how to pray. God always shows you, you know. Anyway, the next night I was at home sitting up in my bed with a cup of tea and talking to the Lord about what was happening. And Lord, we really need to get, get this witchcraft thing all broken and dismissed. So just at that moment, I had an open vision at the foot of my bed to the right hand corner. And this massive angel, this man, massive warrior, he was about eight feet, like he went right up to the ceiling, eight feet or whatever the, the height of the ceiling was. And he was so broad and he had on an iron um, soldier's warrior's outfit with a helmet. And he was standing there in all his mighty power with his arms open wide and behind him was a set of gates. He was protecting the gates of the Root Youth Academy. God had sent him to war with us. Oh, it was just so amazing. Yeah, so um, he protected the work and he worked with us. Um, in that situation. I'm just looking here if there's anything I've missed. But you know, God sent that mighty warrior angel to protect this youth work in the community of Presley, guarding it. He had been sent to work with us. After that prayer and that revelation and knowing that God had sent a warrior angel to work with us. All these young people came swarming back. <laughs> oh, God is just so good. Um, and actually there was the result of what God had shown me in my conservatory when he said, I am going to send an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way. And if you diligently obey him, obey his voice and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and I will be an adversary to your adversaries. And he sure kept his word to me. He sure kept his word and he overruled the work of the enemy, completely overruled him. 
Um, Psalm 91 and 11 says, He shall give his angels charge over you and guard you in all your ways. All your ways. So that was an exciting time and it was a learning time. <laughs> Another way in which God sent his angel to guard me was when I was in Monaco. Hmm. I was living in Nice in France at a, a bed and breakfast place and a friend was supposed to be joining me. But unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, it turned out that I was there on my own. So that was a, a new thing really in France. Um, so I had to make a decision. Would I be all gloomy because things weren't working out the way that we had planned? Or I could go sightseeing, enjoy myself and have a great time. So I chose the latter and I booked a coach trip. Now this coach trip was to leave the next day um, at the railway station. So just to make sure that I was getting to the right pickup point, I went the day before and saw where the point was that I was to be picked up. That was fine. When I was at the station, I saw that there was a sign there to say the train was going to Monaco. I thought, oh, I'll just go on that train to Monaco and I'll view the, the boat show because I had seen that on television. There was a boat show yearly. So I get on to the train, up the stairs, through tears, went to Monaco, and I saw how the billionaires <laughs> live. <laughs> so later, when I was needing to have a lunch, I went from the harbour up this hill. I didn't know where I was going. I just thought I'll go there and see if there's an eating place. And when I went round the bend, here's this huge, huge building with dozens of steps up to it. And it said, Monte Carlo Casino. <laughs> oh, I thought, right, so that's Monte Carlo Casino. And these limousines with the tinted windows were arriving. And then the, the people would ascend up all these stairs into this uh, place. So later on, um, when it was time for me to go home, the police would not allow um, anyone to go back the way they came. So that sort of threw me a bit because I didn't know how to get back to the station and I didn't speak the French language. So I just eventually you know, round about and round about and eventually I did find my way back to the station. So I thought I don't know which platform it is and I could see these escalators up and escalators down. So I took out my ticket and had it in my right hand and as people passed me I would ask them where is the platform for Nice Show? But no one was interested, no one stopped, they just all rushed past me. I think it was rush hour at tea time and they all rushed past me but there was hundreds of people and nobody stopped and all of a sudden I get caught up in the crowd and the next thing I knew I was in this huge escalator and it was like sardines in a tin. So next to me on the left hand side, there was another escalator and I, I looked around to see if I could catch anyone's attention, but no one was, they were all intent on getting up to the top and finding the train. So I was beginning to get a bit panicky because I was just getting caught up. I didn't know where I was going. So I thought if I turn around and I was maybe catch someone's eye that's coming up at my back on the other escalator, that would maybe, maybe someone could help me. No one looked. Everyone was just staring straight ahead and they were squashed like mad. So 
I looked back and about six foot or nine foot behind me on this other escalator was this gentleman. He was very tall and had white curly hair and he was wearing a lightweight summer suit and a white open neck shirt. So I turned round and he caught my eye and he said, follow me, just like that, follow me. So I nodded and you know, I thought, oh, great, I'll follow this man. He was not realising then that he never ever saw my ticket because it was over here in my right hand and he was six feet behind me. So he didn't actually, in the natural, know where I'd be going. Anyway, I lifted my head and suddenly, instead of this man being six feet behind, he was six feet in front of me in this other escalator. And it never dawned on me to actually analyse how did he get there when the whole place is jam-packed like sardines. Anyway, he kept looking back to check that I was still following up following. Then we reached the flat ground and all these corridors and corridors. And then he would go around one corridor to let one to the right. And by this time I was nearly running to keep up with him because I didn't want to let him out my side. Now it was easy to see because he was head and shoulders above everyone else. So I got to this platform eventually, but it was full of men, absolutely hundreds of men waiting for this train. Oh Lord help, could you please put a woman in my path so that I can stand next to a woman? And eventually I did come to this lady and she turned and smiled and I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. So I stood next to her and I looked up. I had noticed that this man had been looking back, checking that I was still on the platform. And I looked up to give him a nod and a wave of thanks. I had totally disappeared, totally disappeared. Now, I would have seen him because he was head and shoulders above everyone and he had totally disappeared. <laughs> so it wasn't until I was actually comfortably sitting on the train and the upstairs part that I began to think, how did he get from behind me to in front of me? And then I realised I seemed to know that face. I had seen that face before. Then it suddenly dawned on me. It was the face of that angel that Jesus introduced me to in my own conservatory. Here he came to rescue me at a time when I was really feeling slightly panicky and wondering how will I ever get back to where I started. God is so good. Mm. His protection and his care is just so amazing. And he led me to safety. What a wonderful God he is. He just shows us how much he cherishes us, how much he treasures us, how much he loves us. And he shall give his angels charge over us to guard us in all our ways. Isn't that wonderful. So when we looked at these first these three angels, the first one was dressed in normal angelic outfit, white. And Jesus gave instructions about this angel. The second angel had this suit of armour. He was massive, a suit of armour on to war with us. And the third angel <laughs> was wearing an everyday summer suit, no wings. You know, God is just amazing. How he, he takes care of us in every way. I'm just so thankful. So the next one and the sort of last area that I want to speak about is number four, the angelic uh, visitations when we don't actually see an angel, but we can sense the presence of the angel. In the early 90s, when I so hungered 
for more of God. I studied the word every day, every day. And when I was discovering fresh revelation, I would sometimes sense this presence of my angel. Sometimes it would just be a flash of light or a flash of blue light. But I would just sense that that angel was there. And that was so exciting in those days because I didn't really know much about angels and I'd never had a visible, a vision, an open vision. You know, I had seen many angels, but not an open vision like I've just told you about these open visions there. But more recently, um, I have known uh, a different type of angelic activity when I've been praying in my bedroom. I suddenly, when I'm lying, and I thought, I'll just go to sleep now, and I'm lying, and suddenly uh, my attention was drawn by this shimmering light. Shimmering light, you know, like the way when a bulb is going to conk out on you. But it was shimmering and shimmering, and I was trying to think, how come this would happen? Is there a lamp outside? Is there anything? I had no lights in. So this was a shimmering light. And then I could sense this angel, lying flat on my back, I could sense this angel actually flying around the room. Sense the angel, and that must have been the shimmering. Oh. And what, what the angel brought was the beautiful presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord was so thick. And at one point, I could not even see my chandelier because there was a cloud had come down to below where that chandelier hung on the ceiling. I was in awe of God. And that actually happened two nights in a row, one night after the other. The fire of God burned into my hands and I knew this was for, although I've always moved in the supernatural of God, I knew this was to do with creative miracles. It was to do with such supernatural miracles and this fire of God was burning into my hands, the power of God. You know, I was in awe of his deep, deep love from the Father. The love that he has for his children and how close he wants to be to us. I long for that more than anything. You know, angels are assigned to you when there's persecution. And I hope that may you, may the little stories of these experiences may help you to not be afraid or not be apprehensive at the thought of you seeing angels or sensing the presence of angels wherever you are. God so loves you.